God. Hello, we're with Neil Farrow, the Labor candidate for Bran. How are you, Neil? I am very well. Happy Midsummer. Happy Midsummer to you too. Now, we need to ask, what is your history? How did you get involved with the Labor Party? So, um, I've been a member of the Labor Party for almost a decade and originally joined uh, back in Canberra and moved to Melbourne about eight years ago. And I've been working with Rainbow Labor probably about four years now, actually, on a lot of our reforms for insects people and sex discrimination and uh, things like that so and that would keep you very busy because at the moment one of the major issues is intersex and transgender isn't it it is and um, we're really pleased uh, I think it was probably about four four months before the election to become the first country in the world to give intersex people um, protected status under the sex discrimination act so um, that was definitely a very proud moment and it's great to have um, an openly gay and I'm not sure I'm allowed to say single candidate running in the field um, in Victoria of course, so. of course you can you can see we love your position check it out boys. Yeah, yeah. And we're hoping you'll be our first gay prime minister actually. Oh, that would be and lovely. We hope you treat it a bit better than Julia Bill like that. Oh, it would be, it's great to get involved and um, it's really good to hopefully represent the people of Grant. Right, beautiful. Now, Rainbow um, Labor Network, how do people get involved? How Rainbow get Labor, involved? they can visit, uh, visit Victorian Labor, so viclabor.com.au and you can sign up there to the Labor Party and Rainbow Labor. It's easy as that. Absolutely. To the rest of the world, let's watch it. Aren't they? Candidates cute. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Woo! I'll give you one of the cards. So oh. Hi, I just spotted a really cute guy. I've got to interview him. Hi, guys. Hello. You're on Steve TV and Pride TV. Hi. Hello. Hello. What are you doing here? Like, you're... We're from the Australian Lesbian and Gay Archives. Yeah. We collect gay, lesbian, yes. bisexual, transgender, intersex material. Ooh. We have conferences, we have history walks. We've got a history walk on the 19th. Ooh. Publications, which are just over here. Uh, and we have members who work to support the archives, to collect. Keeping our history intact. We're always looking for um, new donations. Sometimes we have quite a good collection, but we're always looking to kind of increase it and fill in the gaps. Sometimes we have gaps in things. And do you have like a, a digital presence or...? We do have a digital presence. We're on social media and we have a website. Ah, cool. And on the website there are links to all uh, sorts of different activities that we run, open days um, where people can just come in and sort and of check it out. And contribute to our gay history as That's well, right. I presume. yep. Ah, cool. Well, thank you very much for being here. Um, I might like to have a look at some of your stuff. You can have, take our hot off the press postcard. I love that. I'd love to have postcards where it's placed on a post here that was produced um, wow, thank you group, very much. a group of students at Monash in 1979. Uh, so we've made it a postcard. You can send it to your friends. Beautiful. <laughs> I love your work. I think it's really Thanks. important to keep our gay history intact. Yeah. I know I've made a bit of history along the way, as we all have contributed. Yeah. That's a really important thing that we preserve it. Have you got 900 yeah. Um, so there's, there is quite a lot. My, uh, he is cute though, don't <laughs> Well worth it. Good advertising. Yeah. Now look at this. Such a real, really nice networking little lame way of tents here. And it's just a really good vibe. Beautiful day. In the shadow of the city. How gorgeous. Here we are, we're still at midsummer, we're still floating around for Pride TV, Steve TV, Steve TV, Pride TV. Me TV, her TV, <laughs> our TV. Now, as everybody in Melbourne knows, Pride March is kicking off on the 2nd of February, and it is the first Pride March for the world, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Yeah, we're the lead event. Now, this year, we've been brought with a couple of challenges, Matt. What happened? Uh, basically, it's that very simple thing of in 2012, we were washed out, and so we continue to face significant financial pressures in that space. We are a pride march and that's what our main core business is. Uh, unfortunately as a result of uh, not being able to uh, to really afford proper infrastructure down in the, the gardens, uh, 
we're going to probably change that event. We're not running anything down in Katani Gardens, uh, but there are some uh, positive things that might be uh, announced at our launch on Friday night, the 17th of January, outside the St Kilda Town Hall. Beautiful. Now, with regards to money, it's hard for any group to raise money. To put Pride March on, I believe it's around the ninety to $110,000. Absolutely. You need sponsors. How proactive will you be now in getting those sponsors so that next year we don't have this challenge? We've, we've constantly been active with sponsors. Uh, Basically, it's a one-day event and it's got considerably harder and particularly making that decision that uh, Pride was walking away from uh, having active involvement with uh, Katani Gardens. We've obviously lost the sponsorships there, but it was never a revenue neutral aspect to it. So it was costing us more money to put on those spaces than what the sponsorship out there was willing to pay. So there's no point having a stage that roughly costs about $15,000 and you knew it was only a small stage, well the sponsorship for that stage was $10,000. So, you know, we're operating in a space where, yes, we're providing a service, but if that's not actually making money for the organisation or not actually breaking even, we as a board have got a responsibility and a duty to continue the actual pride march itself rather than everything else. So, essentially, our decision has been we need to go back to basics and then slowly build the event back up again, put money back into uh, into the bank account and then engage a little bit more uh, at uh, a local level in bringing people on. And I think what you'll find is at the launch on Friday, while it's not sponsorship so much, there is a hell of a lot more uh, active engagement with key stakeholders. And, and, and that's that's perfect. Beautiful. Because the City of Port Phillip have been major sponsors since, Absolutely. since the beginning of since its inception. Yep. And they're staying on board, of course. Absolutely. Our funding uh, deed agreement comes up at the end of this uh, Pride March. So from the point of view of uh, obviously not being able to uh, actively run Botanic uh, Gardens, that's a perfect time for us. Um, I can say that the City of Port Phillip has been exceptionally uh, generous in some of the things that they've uh, done for us, which have included, uh, just in the last uh, couple of days, they've taken away the $5,500 debt that was uh, held over for our traffic management from 2012. So when I say that we continue to suffer from 2012, they're those things that continue to really haunt the organisation. $5,500 is essentially a small sponsorship that we don't have to find necessarily, or if we do find in the meantime, is a bonus. So their support's been fantastic. The St Kilda Traders, uh, uh, or the Fitzroy Street Traders Association have been fantastic, and the St Kilda uh, Tourism Association have been fantastic. They've come to the party in terms of acknowledging what a great event it is for their uh, businesses, for the tourism within the area, and for the council as one. And so, uh, out of a lot of negative uh, space that we've been in, there's been some very positive things that we've been able to do probably in the last week that wouldn't have come to the fore so much uh, if, uh, if you like, the trigger wasn't pushed. <laughs> Good work. I mean, you pull this together in what seems to be like the, the wave of the magic wand because, you know, there was the word that there was nothing happening at the gardens, the community was upset, and they were looking for blood in many cases. You've come out of that, you've been honest with what's going on, and, and it's all the power to you guys. Now, on the day, the march doesn't change. Absolutely. Uh, the march doesn't change. It's uh, assembly from 12 uh, p.m. from uh, on the corner of Lakeside Drive and Fitzroy Street. Also before the march this year. So if you'd just like to have a look at that, and you can also find it online. We, for the first time, have got a brunch that's a money uh, raiser for the organisation. It's at uh, Mavis Browns on Fitzroy Street. Forty-five dollars get you a uh, Bloody Mary on arrival, bubbles, canapes, and you can win the chance of two hotel rooms valued, or the package is valued about $391. So you've roughly got about a 1 in 40 chance of winning one of those rooms. Fantastic, that's mine. Now, um, there's nothing changed with March. The no, dikes and bikes all. will still be leaving us down. Absolutely. And, and there will be activities at the Tiny Gardens. That's the main thing. Yep. And most importantly, we also made contingencies in terms of last year we had an after March uh, or an official after March celebration at the GH. That's continuing on as well. Um, and we've made contingencies that if the weather wasn't as nice as what it is today, that literally there's something in place. The Greyhound have been very, or the GH have been very uh, uh, generous. They're giving us sponsorship, but there's also a percentage of the bar 
up on the night also go to the organisation. So we're not sitting at, at home just knitting or anything like that. A lot of the time over the last probably two to three months has been those discussions with key stakeholders. Some have worked, some haven't, but ultimately at the end of the day, we're all there to march down Fitzroy Street and everything else after that is a bonus. Okay, now if you haven't registered for Pride March, how do you go about it? Go to our website, www.primarch.com.au, hit the March button and then there's a registration tab. And then once you've registered, we then send an email saying thank you for your registration. And it's basically as simple as that. Fantastic. We've been talking to Matt, the President of Pride March Victoria, which is on the 2nd of February 2014, the first Pride March on the globe. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Look at all of the MCV covers. So pretty. I know. I love your magazine because of the pretty covers. I'm a fan. So it's all happening here. Oh, look at the little poochie. Oh, hi! <laughs> Happy Midsummer! <laughs> There's certainly no shortage of people that are willing to be interviewed. Just haven't got enough tape or time to interview all of them. But at least you get the gist of what it's like down here. <laughs> Lindsay, I didn't know you were into men's underwear. I just want to be an arty shopper. Show the shoulders, that's a good look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on.